Good evening, I am Dr. Akl, I am a practicing physician in Flint and basically uh, I will discuss with you uh, the way cancer of the endometrium will be managed. Endometrial cancer commonly occur in postmenopausal women, women postmenopause and basically they present with postmenopausal bleeding, they have bleeding even though their period stopped many years ago, then they start to have bleeding. And that is the early symptom of endometrium cancer. So uh, those patients need to be seen by their physician because they need to rule out endometrial cancer. Initially, those patients will undergo uh, DNC and uh, endometrial biopsy and once the diagnosis of endometrial cancer is made, then the management, how we treat endometrial cancer. Endometrial cancer primarily treated with surgery. And majority of patients has early disease. That's the good news. Majority of patients has early disease. As long as once they feel any ble they start to have symptoms, they see their physicians and the majority are diagnosed early, early enough to get high chance of cure. So the treatment for endometrial cancer once it is diagnosed is a removal of the uterus, hysterectomy. And so far this will be the majority of patients require hysterectomy only, especially if their disease is early and does not have grave signs. Recently, a big study showed those patients undergo lymph node removal versus those who did not undergo lymph node removal. They found that lymph node removal does not increase the chance of cure, meaning there is no therapeutic benefit to lymph node removal. However, it might give an idea prognostic wise. In that big trial, big randomized trial, four countries uh, participated in that trial and it showed whether you remove the lymph node or not, that does not change the chance of survival or the chance of cure. The survival is identical. So by and large, majority of patients has their uterus removed and that's the primary treatment for endometrial cancer, removal of the uterus and palpating the nodes. If the nodes are not suspicious, then the, 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 some centers rather do nodal sampling and some school recommend that However, uh, for practicality issue, uh, be, if the cancer is early based on the biopsy done or the, uh, uh, the uh, DNC, then uh, those patients probably removal of the uterus or hysterectomy is adequate. Uh, then based on that, you look whether those patients require additional therapy or not. For early cancer, surgery is adequate, no further therapy, and end of discussion. And those patients do very well. Their outcome is very good. Their survival is very high, and the quality of life is very good as well. 
those intermediate risk patients and high risk patients they require post-operative radiation and plus minus chemotherapy depending on the stage and the prognostic features based on the information we got from those patients. So to sum up, endometrial cancer mainly occur in postmenopausal women, women and present with bleeding, postmenopausal bleeding, and immediately those patients need to seek uh, medical attention and diagnostic work up to rule out endometrial cancer. In case the, it is cancer, then the, there is some work up need to be done, blood work, x-ray, CAT scan, before surgery. And once surgery is done, which is the standard of treatment for endometrial cancer, removal of the uterus, uh, plus minus the lymph node, uh, and depending on the aggressiveness of cancer. Uh, the, then, based on that, patients are classified to low risk, intermediate risk, and high risk, depending on the pathology feature of this tumor. Is it aggressive, intermediate, or low? And also depends on the depth of penetration into the myometrium. The endometrium is the layer lining the muscle of the uterus. If the tumor invade into the muscle, whether it is superficial invasion or deep invasion, whether the tumor is high grade or intermediate grade, how big is the tumor, whether it is in the lower uterine segment or in the upper uterine segment, and so on. So we decide what risk factor this patient has. Is it low risk, intermediate risk, or high risk. For low risk, usually surgery is adequate, no further therapy. For intermediate risk and high risk, radiation need to be given post-operatively to prevent the tumor coming back. For advanced or little bit high intermediate and uh, high risk, those patients require, in addition to radiation, chemoth chemotherapy treatment. This is in simple uh, explanation. So this tumor, as I mentioned, is common and uh, more common than uh, cancer of the cervix. Uh, I, and in another session, I'll talk about cancer of the cervix. And the treatment is not sophisticated, either surgery alone, removal of the uterus plus minus the lymph nodes and the pelvis plus radiation plus or minus chemotherapy. And this treatment is good enough to cure patients. Again, prognosis depends on the level of aggressiveness of the tumor or whether if the patient's low risk, usually their outcome is excellent, close to 100% cure. If the patient's intermediate risk, again, probably in the 70s and so on. For high risk, again, uh, for uh, in the 50s, maybe less, maybe high, depending on how many risk factors patient has. Uh, patient need to understand that even if they are in the high risk categories, still many treatment, many uh, options they have, and because there is many variables in the aggressiveness of this tumor, uh, the, the, there is no one variation. For example, if the tumor is deeply infiltrated, that is uh, not a favorable sign. But if it's deeply infiltrated and they will be having cancer, those patients might do very well than if the tumor is aggressively uh, high grade, we call it, and doesn't infiltrate very far. So you, we need to look at all those factors together, put them together before giving the patient the outcome. But generally speaking, as long as the cancer did not spread far, the outcome is good. And for those patients, when the cancer spread far, we call it stable.